Um, and so, yeah, we've been, I've been monitoring questions as Dr. D'Ambrosio has been talking. And um, one that we've gotten several times is follow-up MRIs. After you receive um, gamma knife or cyber knife, any sort of radiation treatment, how long should you be um, going and getting follow-up MRIs? And, you know, we've had this question, like I said, multiple times, and it's been people who are a year out, people who are five years out, 10 years out, even 15 years out, should they, you know, what, how, how consistently should they be doing that at those different timeframes? Great question. Um, again, you know, most of the questions, uh, I can give you very good generic answers. I can give you my formula for just understand a lot of these vary depending on your own situation. So you would always want to ask your team why they're getting scans or why they're not getting scans. But in general, I would say if, if you're an upfront treatment with gamma knife, I get scans every year for the first three years post gamma knife. So if you're treated today, I don't scan you until one year from today. And then I do that three times. Um, and I also will get hearing examinations every year, but I'll stagger them. So I'll do the hearing test six months from now and then every year thereafter. So every six months you're getting an objective assessment of what's going on. Um, that can change. I used to get, when I first started, I got scanned six months after gamma knife. And what I found was on the six month scan, patients look great, but their tumor always looked a little plump. And it was counterintuitively a good thing because what was happening is the tumor as, you know, gamma knife doesn't work right away. Radiation surgery, cyber knife doesn't work right away. There's a lot of biological injury that happens to the tumor on purpose that causes inflammation and cell death. So schwannoma cell death, which is good. You want it to die. So what happens is it kind of gets a little inflamed and sometimes people get, if they came in with some balance problems or some other things, they can get a little irritated during that swelling period. And then the swelling period naturally goes away by one year, you know what you're dealing with. So a lot of my patients came in where they had a scan in 2015 and then they had a scan in 2017 and then in 2019 and each one of them showed a little growth. So we had this pre-existing MRI series of growth. So we plotted a line. We're like, okay, you're, you're growing two millimeters per year. You're 40 years old. We can't let this grow anymore. So then we treat it in 2019. And then every year thereafter, I just hope that that growth curve flattens. And then when I get to year three, if the hearing's preserved and the growth is flattened, then I expand to, to a two-year scan and then sometimes a three-year scan after that. Okay. And can you talk about how that, that swelling, how do you see the difference between the swelling and the growth? Because does the swelling extend past that one year mark sometimes? It usually does not. It's a great question. So if you're starting to see, you know, this continued growth, usually at year one, it should be flat. Mm -hmm. If it's bigger at year one, I worry it didn't work. Uh, so at six months, it was bigger. And I'd be like, ooh, is it growing? And then I'd image it in 12 months and it'd go back down. So usually by 12 to 24 months, you really should see a response that's flat. So you should not, again, this is all a caveat, but more often than not, you do not see continued volume growth beyond a year if it's working. Okay. And again, that's a very general statement. Sure, sure, that makes sense. And with that then, um, how about symptoms? Like when would you 